Do I have to do this again? Do I really have to do this again? You are going to make me explain again why WNBA players don't deserve a raise. You're going to make me sit here again and explain Economics 101, something that they clearly did not teach at Padua College, which is where Liz Cambridge went. Because at 30 years old, she still does not understand basic economics. And it's not just her. Mike Sykes at USA Today doesn't understand. Kelsey Nicole Anderson, who is supposedly the DMV Sports Media Person of the Year. What an honor to be given an award by the same place that issued your driver's license. Make sure you hang that one on the wall. I happen, I actually happen to agree with Kelsey Nicole Anderson, though not in the way that she would think. She said on Twitter, women athletes deserve to be paid their worth. I agree 100%. Serena Williams, Venus Williams, worth millions. Madison Keys, Naomi Osaka, Ashley Barty, worth millions. I could go on and on, listing female athletes that have earned millions of dollars, and deservedly so. But when it comes to the WNBA, and we want to use the logic of Kelsey Nicole Anderson paying women athletes what they're worth, WNBA players are worth zero fucking dollars. If they are paid one dollar, they are 100% overpaid. Now, I know that's harsh. I know that causes feminists to lose their breath, but the truth hurts. There is no emotion in the world of business. You know what happens to emotional businesses? They go bankrupt. But before I go any further, let me play you this clip of Liz Cambridge. This is really unbelievable. There is this false notion that just because you work hard, you are owed a certain amount of money. Some of the hardest workers in this country are manual laborers, guys with shovels in their hands 12 hours a day, cutting grass for some landscaping company, bricklayers. I respect guys like that. They bust their ass every day. Guys you see cutting grass, the laborers, landscaping is tough work. Those guys, they make anywhere from $11 to $15 an hour. Now, those guys work a hell of a lot harder than I do physically anyway but I make far more money. Why is that? Because the owner of a landscaping company, he can go down to labor finders and find another grass cutter in five seconds. You take me off of this channel, the channel is dead. It's a hell of a lot harder to build an audience than it is to find someone to cut your grass. My point is, your financial status is not tied to how hard you work. It's tied to how high your value is. This is a concept that WNBA players, along with the dumbasses who blindly support their fight for higher pay, can't seem to understand. Liz Cambridge was on NBA Today on ESPN yesterday. Now, I'm not sure why an NBA show is talking about the WNBA, but I digress. Of course, the primary topic was pay in the WNBA. Listen to this propaganda. What do you think the league needs to continue to do to invest in the WNBA and its players? At the end of the day, my main issue is with the CBA. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, NECA and the Players Association, they did such a, a great job of, of, of getting us a new collective bargaining agreement. But we have owners at the moment that want to do more for us and give more for us, yeah. i.e. this Becky Hammond situation, which I think is amazing that there's owners in the WNBA that want to pay us which is close to, you know, the whole salary cap in the WNBA. Becky Hammond yeah. is getting, a, what, a million dollars a year. The salary yeah. cap is 1.4, I think. So it's tough to, to know that few of us are already taking a salary cut to play here in the WNBA. You know, I've been vocal since day one. I sat out five seasons because I get paid five to eight times more of a season I do here in the WNBA. Wow. And it's hard when... You want to be at home. You know, America is home for me now, and I want to spend as much time as I can here. But a lot of women go overseas and spend eight months in China or, or Europe to make their main money. So it's hard when you have the best league in the world, but we're not treated like the best athletes in the world. The entire clip's about two minutes long. I'm going to split it in half. I'll play the rest of it here in just a second. But let's get to that first point. WNBA owners want to pay players more but the CBA is stopping them. 
That is a fucking lie. Liz Cambridge references Becky Hammond, new head coach in Las Vegas. You know why Becky Hammond is making over a million dollars to coach in the WNBA? Two reasons. One, they had to pay her just to get her to come. Becky Hammond was on her way to being the first female head coach in the NBA. They couldn't offer her $200,000 to come to the WNBA. She wouldn't have come. They had to make the financial incentives so great that she couldn't turn them down. But two, Becky Hammond has value. There's that word again, value. She has name recognition. She has NBA coaching experience. Hell, Becky Hammond has more name recognition than every other player in the WNBA. Now let's address the second point. Liz Cambridge said that she gets paid five times more to play basketball overseas. Hmm. I guess they don't teach math at Padua College either. Liz Cambridge is currently making $170,000 in the WNBA. She spent a few years playing in the WNBL in Australia, where her salary was $400,000 a year. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but I'm pretty sure that's about two times the money, not five times. But it gets even better because Liz Cambridge fails to mention a key point, a point that is imperative to this discussion. The WNBL actually does something that the WNBA has never done. They make money. Fiscal year 2020, the WNBL had a $76,000 surplus. That was during the COVID. Fiscal year 2019, the league made $183,000. Now, that's not a lot of money for a sports league, but at least they're profitable. Guess how much money the WNBA loses every season? $10 million. That's with the NBA subsidizing them, giving them millions of dollars every year, and they still find a way to lose money because the damn players are overpaid. James Dolan, owner of the New York Knicks, he used to own the New York Liberty, too. Back in 2018, he was asked how much money the team had made since he owned the team. He owned the team over 20 years. Guess how much money the New York Liberty made? Zero dollars. Last point, and we'll get to the next clip. I can't believe I even have to address this, but Liz Cambridge said the WNBA is the best league in the world. Rarely am I left speechless. I spend hours every day sifting through media propaganda trying to find the truth. But damn, that's some of the biggest bullshit propaganda I have ever heard. The WNBA is the best league in the world? Are we talking about the same fucking league? The last I checked, this league couldn't draw fans to a free championship parade in Chicago. I've seen more people at my nephew's t-ball game then attended the Chicago Sky Championship Parade last fall. If ESPN weren't a network dedicated to propaganda, they would have cut her mic as soon as she said that. Excuse me, Liz, we report the truth on this network. We can't have you telling people the WNBA is the best league in the world when it's not even a top 100 league in America. I know you're trying to make more money. Maybe Liz Cambridge should try stand-up comedy. Because that's some of the funniest shit I've heard in a long time. The WNBA is the best league in the world. Get the fuck out of here. But it gets even better. Check out this next part. Um, you know, I, I pay to upgrade myself. That's one part of the CBA that I can't stand is that I, my team, my club can't look after me and put me in first. I personally don't even fly myself economy. I haven't seen the back of a plane since the WBA <laughs> season was over. I don't fit back there. So the, so the fact that I have to pay yeah. to upgrade mm -hmm. my flight to get to work and perform, it, it's crazy to me, but you know, we got owners in the league that want to do so much more for us, but they can't. They're very restricted by the CBA. So I'd like to see that loosened up a bit. Um, right. and, the, and the Supermax to go up. Well, and we're <laughs> seeing the women's game. We're seeing more investments in it. Mm -hmm. And so I can only hope that those investments that you're talking about mm -hmm. to allow yourself that peak performance that they're going to follow mm -hmm. because we've seen that when women's games get put on national TV, when people get, are given the opportunity, they come and yeah. they watch, Ramona. Okay, so I wasn't familiar with the CBA and the WNBA. I had to find it and read through it. It's 350 pages, but I was just looking for the information on flights, airline tickets. 
Page 102 of the WNBA CBA, it states, and this is not verbatim, but it says WNBA teams are required to provide premium economy seats to players. Nowhere does it say that teams are not allowed to upgrade players to first class. That's the way Liz Cambridge made it sound, like owners were prevented by the CBA from upgrading players to first class. Team owners, from what I can tell, they have the option to do so. But why in the hell would they incur the added expense? They're already bleeding money paying the players. NBA teams, they have their own team planes. Know why WNBA teams don't? They can't afford it. The CBA is not restricting owners from doing more for players. Money is restricting them from doing more from players. Can you imagine how a WNBA owner must feel? Put yourself in their position. Imagine for a second, you own a bar. Your bar is losing money every month, but you continue to pay your employees. You even allow them to drink cheap whiskey after work. What would you do if one of your bartenders came to you and said, I don't like the cheap whiskey. It's gross. I want the $2,000 Pappy Van Winkle instead. You'd fire them on the spot. I don't know who that host was, that young girl on the left, but in the final seconds of the clip, she said something to the effect of, when WNBA games are put on national television, when people are actually given the opportunity to attend games, they show up, they support, they watch. Jesus. Sometimes I wish I lived in this fantasy world. I wish I lived in this world where just because I said something, it's true. I'm having problems with my forerunner right now. If I lived in their world, my problems would just go away. That smoke coming out of the exhaust every time I crank her up, that's not a problem. It's not indicative of engine trouble. It's simply the car farting. Everything is fine. The average WNBA ticket sells for around $17. People have plenty of opportunity to attend WNBA games. Hell, homeless people can afford WNBA tickets. But all this opportunity... Yet the average WNBA attendance in 2021 was 2,600 a game. That's with the Phoenix Mercury propping attendance figures up. They're the most popular team in the WNBA, if you can call drawing 5,900 fans popularity. The ratings on television, even worse. The WNBA averaged 306,000 viewers per game in 2021. Now, I'm a small channel here on YouTube. My channel gets more views every month than the average WNBA game. And they're on network television. They're on ABC. They're on cable, ESPN, ESPN2. They have a national platform. So let's just, let's just summarize here for a second. Liz Cambridge doesn't understand economics. She doesn't know how to multiply. She doesn't understand the concept of value. All she knows is that in her mind, she deserves to be paid more in a league that loses $10 million a year, in a league that plays in front of empty arenas every night, in a league that can't draw advertising dollars because no one's watching. If Liz Cambridge can make five times the money overseas, what the hell is she doing in the WNBA? When she was making $400,000 in Australia, she was broke. She gave an interview to The Age in 2019 and claimed that she could not make her mortgage payments. That is not an income problem. That's a priority problem. No one needs to hook Liz Cambridge up with Dave Ramsey. All right, let me know what you guys think. Here we are again, listening to a WNBA player complain about compensation when they don't have the value to be compensated. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.